Please join me in the call to worship it can found, be found in your bulletin. Loving Lord, we know your love. Your son Jesus came to earth so that we may be shown your love. We know you as the source of our hope.
Let us pray. Loving Lord, we want to know you better. We want to feel your presence in our lives as we walk through our daily life. We claim you as our Lord, and yet we don't recognize you when you reach out and touch us. Lord, at times you are truly a mystery to us. We know your power as the creator of the universe. We know your forgiveness through Jesus Christ. We feel your presence as the Holy Spirit works within us. We know your loving care when we claim you as our Father in heaven, yet we don't truly open ourselves to you. We say we want to know you, we pray to you, but we never just talk with you. Too often we talk to you and don't open ourselves to talking with you as our Father. Help us to understand that you do what you want Help us understand that you do want us to know who you are. Remind us that you want to be in our lives. Help us to grow closer to you and help us to fully see you in our life. Hear us now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. scripture lesson comes from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 through 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the reading of the Lord.
You heard the scripture. One of the problems that people of Jesus' time had was <clears throat> they didn't understand exactly who Jesus was. That's a pretty common problem, I think. They tried to understand him by using their own experiences, their own things that had been taught. They tried to fit him into what they knew, but that just didn't work. Listen to this text. It says the Jews sent the priests and the Levites to Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed, I'm not the Messiah. And they asked him, are you Elijah? He said, I'm not. Are you the prophet? They didn't know. This is the chief priest coming to Jesus and asking who he is. I guess he didn't give him a definite answer. Even his own disciples had trouble understanding who he was because, again, they tried to use their own frame of reference to define who he was. And in John, uh, John 1, 
I'm sorry, John 14, verse 9, it says, Jesus said to him, Have you been with me all this time, Philip, and you still don't know me? Jesus was like nothing else that they had ever had before, nothing they had experienced. And they weren't sure how to, what to think. But today's text tells us about someone who knew who Jesus was. In Mark 1, verses 23 to 24, there in the synagogue was a man with unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, Holy One of God. Isn't it interesting that this <clears throat> unclean spirit knew who Jesus was? He knew. He knew exactly who Jesus was. He knew Jesus' power. Are you going to destroy us? Isn't it interesting that he knew? But again, listen to what the people themselves had to say. This is from verse 27. They were all amazed. They kept asking one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority? And this is the people, the common people. They didn't know either. They didn't know what to think. It says they were amazed and kept asking. They didn't know what to think, I guess. The people didn't really understand who Jesus is. Again, they were trying to use their own frame of reference, and he just didn't fit into that, did he? He was something new. But Paul tells us what we need to do, what we need to understand about God. This comes from 1 Corinthians verse 8, 6 through 7. <clears throat> For there is, is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom all that we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ. Through him are all things, and through whom we exist. It is not everyone who has this knowledge. It's not everyone who has this knowledge. Paul even tells, this is years later, that not everyone knows. Paul makes it clear that knowing Jesus is very important, but that some still don't know him. So I'd like to invite you to ask yourself, who is Jesus? Better question, who is Jesus in your life? Again, this is a complicated question. The problem is that we often feel that if we don't answer the question properly, precisely, that there's something wrong with us. Anybody ever feel that way? Don't answer, don't raise your hands. Just think about it. <clears throat> you ever feel that way that if you don't have the right answer, that something's wrong? Or that if you don't answer it the same way that someone else does, someone else does, that you're wrong. That something's wrong with you. You don't know who Jesus is. We often fail to, to know Jesus. Does that make us one of Paul's unknowing group? It doesn't, no. When we ask who Jesus is, we give the correct answer ourselves. Because we use our own perspective, our own way of looking at things to know who Jesus is. It's a complicated question. So let's look at what the Bible says about Jesus. Jesus is called many different things in the Bible. And, and here's some of the names he's called. And this is, I read them off, it's a hard list. Teacher, Rabbi, a prophet, the Messiah, Emmanuel, the Promised One, the Son of God, the King of Kings, the Good Shepherd, King of the Jews, Savior, Redeemer, Lamb of God, the Lord of Lords, the Light of the World, the Son of the Living God, the Living Water, God of the Living, the Lord of the Bread and of Life, the Gatekeeper for the Sheep, the Resurrection and the Life, the Way, the True Vine, and Friend. It's quite a list, isn't it? This is all different perspectives from the New Testament of who Jesus is to different people. So which one's right? Which one's right? Which one resounds most with you? Jesus has many names. They're not incorrect. Some are important. Some are less important. Here's the answer. This comes from Matthew 16, 15. It says, he said, but who do you say I am? And the key word here is you. 
But who do you say I am? This whole list we have here of different names. Jesus is our personal Savior. He's the Lamb. He's the light. Whatever word you want to use. But it's a personal Savior. And there is no one single correct answer. We're all different. We all see the world through our own eyes and in our own way. And we see Jesus through our own eyes and in our own way also. Just like the priests and the scribes, we, we use our experiences, our learning, to try to describe who Jesus is. Again, this is all we have, our own experiences. We need more. We need more to know about Jesus. Which name defines your relationship? Again, that's key, yours. Because there's so many names. Which ones are right? The answer is all of them, but which one's right for you? The problem with Jesus is there's no one right answer. And I would tell you the best thing I can describe as, <clears throat> I've worked in kitchens before. And in the kitchens, they have rubber gloves you're supposed to wear when you're, wear when you're preparing food. You all wear that, right? And they're all one size fits all. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit, I can tell you that. They come up to about here on me, and my fingers are about to here, and this doesn't work. And that's what we try to do with Jesus. We try to say one size fits all, and it doesn't. Each of us are different. Each of us know Jesus differently. One size does not fit all. To each of us, Jesus is different, and that's, that's what we need. Each of us have what we call a, a hole in us. They call it a God-shaped hole. It's the emptiness that isn't filled. It's kind of a, what we're lacking, I guess, in our lives. And that's what Jesus is here to provide. Now, for each of us, the whole is not the same. For each of us, the whole is not filled the same way. But that's the great part about Jesus. There's no one answer. God's a personal God. Jesus is a personal, personal Savior, or whatever word you want to use. If we let him if we let him in, if we recognize that we have this hole and it needs to be filled, and he's going to fill it however it needs to be filled, maybe not how we want, maybe not how we expect, but how it needs to be filled. If we let him in, it's going to change things. And again, from today's text, from, from Mark 1, verse 28 tells us, at once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. If he can fill these holes, if he can meet the people's needs, the fame will spread. If he can meet your needs, he will grow stronger in you. And that's what we need. We have this hole. It's different for every one of us. And it will be filled. And the answer is because Jesus offers what the people need. It's that simple. Jesus offers what the people need. It's that simple. That's so hard for us to say. So hard for us to accept. And Jesus offers what we need. Healing. We need healing sometimes. Healing of the body or healing of the spirit. We don't know. But we do, we need, we do know we need it. And Jesus brings it. He brings hope and he brings peace for those who need that. For some... It's a simple presence of God. Or maybe it's just understanding that God is present. We all have different needs, but they're filled. Based on our needs, we have different answers. We expect different things. We have different experiences. But God is still ours, and Jesus still came to be our Messiah. The Hebrew people needed a Messiah. They had fallen away from God again. Again, it's the key word, again. The Hebrew people had centuries of prophets, but they needed more. And so Jesus was sent to be all these different things to different people, to fill the needs, not to be one that says, here's how it goes, my way or the highway. Nope. Here's what you need, and here's what I'm here for. Take Jesus personal. That's my advice to you. 
Take Jesus personal. He's not something that's kind of has one way of doing things. He has one, he's one of doing things your way to fill your needs, but much more. He'll fill your needs, but don't limit them to that. Don't make Jesus smaller than he is. You may not have all the needs, but they're there in case you do. We sometimes want to say, well, Jesus is this. But we need to remember Jesus is this and this and this to all those who need him to be those things. It's, nearly, it's a complicated question. That's because Jesus is different for each of us. There's no one answer. The question is, how do you answer the question? How do you? Think about that. Who is Jesus in your life? Jesus is not the lamb. Jesus is not the savior or the Lord. Jesus is your lamb, your savior, your Lord. He didn't come to save the world. He came to save you, to save each of us. And that's the part we sometimes forget. We want to put this label on Jesus and say, yeah, he did this for all the world. And he did, but also for you. We can't forget that. Take it personal. Again, Jesus is not like this prescription that the doctor gives everyone these pills to take. This will heal all your problems. Just take these pills. Ever have a doctor do that? Nope. Some, someone said yes. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is the doctor doesn't give the same pills as everyone walks in their office. And neither does Jesus. Because that's not what we need. It's not a generic thing to be doled out to everybody. It's not a, a blanket that covers all. It's a blanket that covers the needs. Each of us are different. Each of us know Jesus differently. Accept that. We need to say, I know who you are. We need to say, I know who you are. Just, just like the demon said, I know who you are. And you need to celebrate that relationship. Not just let it sit there, but celebrate it. Celebrate what Jesus brings to you. But I think this is maybe the key of the whole thing. I mean, it's a sidebar. Never forget that Jesus says, I know who you are. Take it personal. If you would join our hymn, number seven, I'm sorry, 574.
seated. <clears throat> Let us pray. Loving Lord, we come to you this morning in need of your touch. Lord, we come always in that need. We have so many needs, Lord. We have so many, so many flaws in us. We ask you to, to be with us, to, to fill those needs, to forgive us those flaws, and to let us know of your presence. We need you, Lord. Let us know you personally. Let us talk with you and not just talk to you. Let us walk with you and not just try to lead you. Let us sometimes, Lord, hold your hand as you hold ours. Fill our needs, Lord. Touch us, love us as only you can. And we ask you to bring healing. And sometimes it's healing the body, sometimes healing the spirit to all of us. But especially to those in our bulletin and to those that we now mention. Nancy and Galen. Loving Lord, hear our prayers. Bring us healing as only you can. Touch us as only you can. Show us your friendship and your love as only you can. Amen. Please rise. Loving Lord, accept these are gifts. Multiply them. Let them grow. Let the people they serve grow also in faith and their knowledge of you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Eternal God, you have refreshed us with your spirit at this table. Day, new day. Today we are changed in people who use your work. Fill us with the promise of your work and the power of your spirit. We give thanks to Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Amen. We didn't sing. <clears throat> we did not sing. We didn't know when we're supposed to come in. <laughs> yeah. We didn't know when to come in.
While you're standing, <clears throat> I invite you to join hands for a benediction. Loving Lord, as we go in this world, let's share your love. Let's know your love and let it touch us. Let's share that love and give it to others, all who are in need. Amen.